This video is sponsored by Battle City Gym. Check them out for all your singles and sealed product needs. Hey guys, this is Mike. And Scott. And Jacob. And, and Jacob and Ryan. And Ryan. Uh, us from Deep Force Will, them from where? Sidehose. Sidehose. <laughs> uh, coming at you live from uh, the <laughs> aftermath of ARG Philly, ARG Nationals. Uh, all of us went there yesterday. A couple of us just missed out on top spots, but we all had a really good time, brought super interesting decks, and I'm here profiling the deck that a lot of people were asking me about from yesterday. Um, this is my one inch boy, corrupted one inch boy control deck. <laughs> you are reading that right. Deck ended up going 3 3 1. I'll go over the matchups a little bit later show what happened there, but before then, let's move on to the deck, just so you can see what's happening. Alright, so first on the list is our ruler. Ruler is Charlotte, Determined Girl, also Charlotte, Wielder of the Sacred Spirit. I'm sure a lot of you know what she does, just because she's one of the most versatile rulers we have right now. But she's a Judgment of uh, Blue and 1, Energizes for Blue, and if you pay Blue and discard a card, you rest Target Resonator. This is very important in tandem with the Corrupted 1-inch Boy to make sure your attacks go through. And it's also just a really good control aspect. On our flip side, Charlotte is a 412. Uh, that she cannot be attacked. Uh, when she enters the field, you draw X number of cards, where X is uh, basically you draw until you have five cards in your hand. Um, whenever you draw a card, you gain 100 life for each card that was drawn, so it's a flexible life gain. And you can pay one blue and one colorless, discard a card, and return something your opponent controls to the hand, which is actually fantastic in a lot of matchups. So Charlotte's just Super versatile, very good in, as a control ruler, also against other control rulers, which is pretty interesting, just because if you're facing hand control, they discard your hand, you get it all back immediately, which is very nice and happened a couple of times during the day. Uh, still lineup was fairly simple, uh, had a couple of neat tricks. Uh, first of all, Rules Moria, this is a four color deck, having flexibility with your mana <laughs> just being able to use whatever you need at any time is really good. Five color stones I've heard are pretty good. Uh, the only issue with the head of this card is that sometimes I was very unlucky and didn't draw Regalia during the day, which attributed to a couple of my losses. From there we have three Dark Depths. The deck is mainly blue-black, so having three of those sources is really good. Uh, two Black Silence, just more uh, black control. Uh, again, this is a mainly black control deck, but teching in green for a couple of green spells. Green spells in the sideboard, green spells in the main board, very important. And then one Heaven's Rift uh, to round out the stuff, just because there are a couple of spells that kind of splash white. I think five sources of white just for those was really important. Uh, all in all, the stone lineup was really good. I probably wouldn't have changed much. Um, I saw what I needed when I needed, except for the rules, Moria. Because if I didn't see Regalia, I didn't need them. Uh, going on to the main board, uh, first we have the star of the show here. Uh, four copies of Corrupted One Inch Boy, all of which are signed by Alex Blandin, of course, because this is uh, the dark side of the Blandin. Gotta make sure that we got those. I told him to sign right here, right in the middle there. So, uh, Corrupted One Inch Boy is uh, whenever it attacks and is not blocked, um, even if, uh, as long as the blocker is not declared, your opponent will lose a thousand life after the attack goes through. So, you're attacking with One Inch Boy, they lose a thousand life. This also gets around uh, Yggdrasil, Malefic Tree just because he's swinging for a thousand life. Uh, they don't take damage, they lose the life, so they won't mill any cards and it'll actually affect their life total, which is the reason I put him in here. Turns out I didn't see him enough against Tree, and he actually won me a couple of games in other matchups. From there we have the staple control black card for Abdul Hazred, Poet of Madness. Of course, just an insane card. Um, prevents your opponent from doing shenanigans, prevents them from going off. You stick it on the board, you protect it as much as you can, and your opponent normally doesn't really have much to deal with it outside of maybe like a Shade or a Dark Purge. Not much to say about him. Speaking of Shade, we play two of those. Uh, really good for clearing off Resonators, really good for life gain. Uh, recurring with Resonance is fantastic. Uh, the cards are very versatile and really good for the control match. And then two one ofs in Gil Lapis, Usurper of Maddening Power, to search out your one cost spells. And then one Arthur Pendragon, Knight of the King of the Round Table, as just a big, solid body. Um, a lot of black control decks have a really hard time dealing with him. And normally if you can stick him on the board against black control or against aggro, normally you'll win that matchup pretty easily. So, very strong cards, both of these. Uh, those are my total resonator lineup of, let me say, 14 resonators, I think. 
on to the rest of the deck. Uh, we played nine Regalia, uh, four Artemis of the Gods Bow. Uh, this is a Charlotte deck where we play Bear Bow. Uh, Bow's really good with that. Bow's very good against the aggro matchup. I ended up bumping this up from two in the original build to four just because of how bad my Perseum matchup originally was. Being able to pick up small stuff in the early game is very, very good. Uh, we have three Death Scythe. Uh, Death Scythe, of course, of course is a, uh, you know, infinite discard outlet. Just remove your graveyard, add it back to your hand. Uh, very easy for those matchups. And then we played two Hydromonica, just because, again, we're a control deck. If we have floating mana, you can use it to just stack something on top of your deck. Really helpful for certain scenarios, especially because we play a lot of one-ofs in, uh, in the sideboard. And just make sure that you have access to those is really powerful. Um, against some games, uh, I play nine of these, even in the top 11 cards of my deck. If I mulligan five, I still don't see them. So be warned. I'm really glad they're leaving. Uh, on to more spells. We have three Charlotte's Water Transformation Magic, uh, Quick Cast, Remnant, makes something a 4-4. Um, in tandem with Bow, it just kills something that's attacking you. This card's fantastic. <laughs> Uh, in tandem with that, we have another Remnant card in Space Time Anomaly. Uh, the 4 mana deal 10, draw 2 cards. <laughs> uh, Space Time Anomaly is just fantastic in a control matchup. This is a black blue deck. Having another Remnant card, just an easy discard with Charlotte. Having flexible damage, flexible draws at any time. The card's amazing. Uh, we play a pretty decent cancel package. Again, this is the reason we have the green and the white in our deck. For Seal of Wind and Light. Probably the most versatile cancel in the game. Uh, as long as you play green and white, you can just say no to anything your opponent has. Uh, to go along with that, because we still play green sources, but also because it's free, play four Severing Winds. Uh, this is a control matchup. You want to make sure your opponent's stuff is cleared so you can swing in with your one-inch boy. Uh, the entire cancel package helps out with that a lot. So, pretty self-explanatory there. Control your opponent, swing with one-inch boy. Uh, probably one of the most flexible cards I've seen in the entire deck is Dawn of the Earth. Uh, it's a quick cast card. Uh, if you're playing a Fox matchup, you keep it so that you can, uh, when your opponent sacks off their Resonators in order to summon a Chimera, play this, draw a card, and their Chimera's roof the game without getting its enter ability. Uh, if you're not playing against Fox, though, and if you're not playing against something that just cheats in Resonators, you swing with your 1-inch boy, you Dawn of the Earth your 1-inch boy so it untaps, your opponent takes 200 from the attack because it gains plus 2, plus 2, and they lose 1,000 life. Swing with one inch boy again, they take another two, and then another thousand. So it's a really easy way to just cheat in really, really obnoxious damage. Um, card's fine. I never used the third mode to destroy Regalia because I didn't face enough Regalia matchups. <laughs> uh, we have, and then the last stuff is search, stuff that's searchable off of Gil. You have two Heteroclite Excalibur, really good removal just to make sure that your uh, one inch boy swings in. And then the final battle, just for a blowout card in case you need it. Uh, because you're playing Charlotte, you have a lot of really, really solid life gain. So paying a lot of life with this normally doesn't matter too much unless your opponent cancels it, in which case you basically lose the game. So uh, back and forth on this card. It's fantastic. It's really, really powerful. But you have to make sure you use it at the right time. And that's the main board. That's uh, 40 cards exact. Uh, onto the sideboard. The sideboard was kind of thrown together at the last minute, but uh, has a lot of cards that were really important in most of these matchups. Uh, one Alice, uh, Girl of the Blue Planet. I attacked this in once against the control matchup. If you know what you're playing against, or if you're against the rogue matchup and you know what uh, cards hurt you most, you can call it out on turn four and then try and win the game from there. She's pretty good in that regard. Not the greatest card I've seen, but definitely worth trying out. I play two Rizard, King of the Damned. Playing this against Fox wins you the matchup most of the time. Um, Uses against reanimators really good. Pull out the yogs, pull out the hooks, pull out whatever you need to pull out. Really strong card. Again, life gain, so paying 200 life means almost nothing. Uh, three Gale Force. Uh, definitely came in handy against a couple of my matchups. Playing against Fox. Uh, Fairies was another matchup that I played against. Um, having the ability to just quick cast destroy something with the green stones that we have is really powerful, especially because it clears the way for one inch boy. Uh, three down the drain. I didn't face a single aggro matchup that whole day, so this never went into my sideboard. But having the ability to just clear off fire resonators and swing with one inch boy is really good. Uh, one extra seal of wind and light. Tech that in against the control matchup. One extra final battle. Tech that in against the uh, aggro matchup or the swarm matchup. Uh, one heavenly gust so that you can get it cancelled by severing winds. Uh, one black moonbeam because, you know, fuck Persia. 
and then two uh, Alice's World of Madness so that you can wipe small boards, uh, stop your aggro matchup, do what you can with that. So again, a little bit hodgepodge thrown together at the last moment, but had a lot of really good cards. Uh, as far as matchups go, uh, first round was against uh, Green Dragon, uh, Green Dragon Control, uh, because of a couple of missed Hydromonica triggers, because I was still getting used to running Hydromonica in the deck, I hadn't practiced a lot with the newer version, so I missed a couple of triggers which would have given me a better advantage, but I ended up just getting hooked and uh, swung down for game, so first round was a loss. Uh, second round was against Fox, stuck Abdul on the board, kept Dawn of the Earth. Uh, round two, swung with one inch boy three times to win the game. Um, so that was really good. Uh, first win was against Fox. Uh, third round was against Alhamat Pro Prokaryotic being Alhamat, which is probably one of the most fun decks I've played against, where it's just like both of us are champ based control decks. So we're just swinging spells at each other, swinging spells at each other. He plays Pro 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 Prokaryotic being at 4,400 attack, and I keep just tapping it down, so he has to kill me with two Schrodinger's observations for 10 apiece. Crazy stuff. Game two of that matchup, I summon Arthur, I know his only answer for it is death at midnight, so I hold all my cancels in my hand, use none of my mana, and just continuously swing with Arthur until I was able to lock him down and seal the game. That one ended up being a draw, the only draw of the day. Uh, next round was against Fox again. Uh, stuck Abdul on the board, played Dawn of the Earth, swung in a couple of times with the Corrupted One Inch Boy, won the game from there, locked him down. So that was two Foxes down, I was 2-1-1 one, one at that point. Uh, next round was against... What was that last round? Don't remember that one. Uh, the one after that was another Fox matchup. Uh, that was my third win, so I was 3-2-1 at that point. The other one was a loss against... What did I lose against? Tree, and then... What did I lose against? Yeah, it was towards the end. No, I, I, I beat all my Fox matchups. I was, I was three for three on Fox matchups. Yeah. You lost the tree. Oh, tree! That was it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that was the tree matchup that I lost against. Uh, I should remember that one because that was the one where I mulliganed five, drew five, no regalia, oh, opened yeah. double rulers of Moria. That was a sad day. Because <laughs> I opened with a one inch boy too, so I could have gotten it out first turn and kept swinging, but he opened up too well for me. Um, other than that, and the Fox was there. And then last matchup was against Blazer Fairies, which was awesome because <laughs> uh, first game of that one, uh, I was putting down Arthur, controlling the board. Eventually, he gets down two Vivians on three of the field spell that when you tap them, you give them plus three, plus three, and whenever a fairy enters the board, you draw a card. Uh, because of that, and because of the Vivian triggers, he was able to give his board plus six, uh, no, plus twenty, plus twenty, and end up swinging at my face for about eight thousand in total which was sick, I was so impressed, uh, and that was also where my final battle got cancelled, so I got blown out by that. Um, round, game two, I opened with a bunch of cancels and one inch boy. I cancelled uh, three Oberons and swung with one inch boy four times for lethal. That was the only time that one inch boy got in exactly four times and dealt exact damage. Um, and then game three, he just blew me out <laughs> in uh, time because it was last round. And because he had a higher life total than I did, he won. So, not much you can do about that. That was a really good game. He made it into top cuts, and he ended up going into top eight from what I'm hearing now. So hopefully he continues, and if he ends up winning this whole thing with Blazer Fairies, I'm going to be ecstatic. Um, but that was basically the entire day. That was the whole event we had there. Um, the deck is unbelievably fun. Extremely thinky, though. It's probably one of the decks where I've had to think the most on my feet. <laughs> Because like every single mana you leave floating, every single tap, every single discard, every single card you discard for Charlotte becomes relevant at some point. And knowing when to do everything was probably the hardest part of that entire day. Um, but I highly recommend trying it out, highly recommend using it against your friends, trying to swing down with 1H boy four times and kill them. So uh, with that being said, thank you all for watching. Uh, it's been a really fun time with Alice Cluster. Uh, can't wait to see where Galia leave. Can't wait to see everything that we don't like leave. Goodbye, Black Moonbeam. Goodbye. <laughs> Thumbs up, Sofrin. <laughs> Goodbye, Regalia. Goodbye, Black Moonbeam. Goodbye, <laughs> Seal, <laughs> Seal Wind and Light. Seal Wind and Light. Guinevere. Guinevere. Rocket. Lancelot. Shadows. <laughs> Goodbye, Alice Format. Goodbye. <laughs> you can tell we like it. Um, but uh, that's the end of the era. I'm glad I closed out with memes. Thank you all for watching. This has been Mike. And Scott. And those two. And the side hose. Yeah.
Sign me up.